Okay, guys, and so we are going to continue and now talk about the Born-Haber cycle. And so it is another technique for determining enthalpies, and you can determine uh, other things besides enthalpies with it. It's um, It looks really complicated, but once you do a couple of these, it's actually uh, quite easy. So I need you to pay close attention, probably write this example down as well, and I'll teach you the techniques for the Born-Haber cycle. And so um, let me give you the example and the data and then we'll get started. Okay, so here is your problem. Construct a Born-Haber cycle to determine the lattice enthalpy for potassium fluoride. And you get, you're getting all of this data and you're going to need to use all of this data to solve the problem. And so um, let me go ahead and begin to set this up and we'll show you how a cycle works. Now all the cycles work the same way and so if you learn this basic idea then you are going to know how to do a Born-Haber cycle for any uh, particular substance. Okay, And so what you're going to begin with is you're going to begin with the elements potassium and fluorine in their standard states and so you're going to begin with potassium which is going to be in the solid state and you're going to begin with uh, one half of F2 because we just need one F to make potassium fluoride. So one half F2, and that's going to be uh, in the gaseous state. Okay, now um, you're you're given all this information up here, and so here's what we got to remember: is that the lattice enthalpy, which is what we're solving for, is the production of the potassium fluoride solid ionic crystal from the gaseous ions. So from the potassium ion, one plus ion in the gas state, and the fluorine, one negative ion in the gas state. So we've got to turn this solid potassium into a gas, and we've got to give it a charge of one plus. And we've got to turn this diatomic F2 into a single fluorine. We've got to break the, uh, the two fluorines bonded together apart, so turn it into a single fluorine, and add an electron to it. And then we can do the lattice enthalpy. So that's the goal of the Born-Haber, is to turn these things into what they need to be so that we can do the lattice enthalpy, which is that change right there. So that's kind of the premise or the foundation, if you will. So... Uh, there's a series of steps that we need to do to do that. It's not going to happen in one step. It's going to be a multiple step process. And each step involves an energy transformation or transition. And so normally what you do when you do a Born-Haber cycle is you begin with the, with the metal. And so in this case, this is going to be the potassium. And the first thing that we're going to do to this is we are going, we're going to atomize it, uh, which is to turn it into a gaseous atom. And so we're going to take, you know, we're going to go from this line here, and we're going to go up because we have to add energy to atomize it, and it's going to turn the potassium solid into potassium gas. Okay. Now that is the enthalpy, the delta change, so the change in enthalpy of A, which stands for atomization of potassium. So that is that value to go from. From this position to this position requires the enthalpy of atomization of potassium, which is given for you up here. It's, it's, it's plus 89. Okay? Um, now, this didn't change, so we're just going to bring this up with us. So plus one half F2 in the gaseous state. Okay? Now, we're going to continue working with the metal until it's in the state that we need it to be in, which we need it to be in the uh, gaseous state with its one positive ion. Okay, that's, that's what we need it to be in. So we're going to make another transition and we are going to ionize that potassium atom and we're going to turn it into a potassium one plus atom. So that's the ionization energy. It's still going to be in the gas state. So this step here is the first ionization energy for potassium, which has been given to you up here as well. Okay, So 
to go, we'll go ahead and kind of put them over here on the right side. So to go from here to here, we have to add, uh, so the atomization of potassium was plus 89, so plus 89. These are kilojoules per mole. I don't have space for them, but they're kilojoules per mole. To go from here to here, that was the first ionization energy of potassium, so we had to add to it 418 kilojoules per mole. Now, once again, we just pulled the fluorine up. We're not even working with that yet. So plus one half F2 in the gas state. Okay. Now, the potassium is what we need it to be in. It is now in the gas phase, and it's charged. So we have the gaseous ion of potassium, which is what we need for lattice enthalpy. Now we need to work on the fluorine. So we're going to atomize the fluorine. So to atomize something means you make it an individual atom in the gas state. And so we're just going to bring the potassium up. It's good. We're just going to bring it up. So potassium 1 plus in the gas state. And now the 1 half F2 becomes simply F. We're taking half of a diatomic, which gives us one fluorine, and it's in the gas state. And so we've atomized fluorine. So this is the enthalpy of change of atomization for fluorine. Okay? And if we want to keep track of our numbers here, this change right here is, where's it at? Right there. Plus 79. Now we need to take the fluorine and make it um, a positive, I'm sorry, a negative charge. Actually, I forgot to write it. That's, this is very, very bad. You should write it. So when we go from here to here, we took off an electron. We should, I should have written plus one electron because uh, that electron doesn't just go into nowhere. It, it, it's here. Now, so here we have, um, if I compress this a little bit so that it's a little tighter. So we have the potassium ion plus the electron that it gave up plus the fluorine uh, that's gaseous. And that was the atomization of fluorine. So we should have this electron uh, on this step as well. Okay. Now we need to uh, give that electron to the fluorine. Remember, because this is what's going to happen, the potassium is going to give to the fluorine. So we need to give the electron to the fluorine, and that's going to be the electron affinity, which we talked about um, as well. Now, the electron affinity, look at the sign right there. What's the sign of electron affinity? At least the first electron affinity is negative. And so in this case, instead of continuing to go up, we're just going to kind of go over and then down because we're losing energy, we're giving up energy. So this is a negative 348. So we have an energy drop there. Oops, wrong color. And so uh, this is our, our level. And we're at that point, we're going to have potassium 1 plus in the gaseous phase plus fluorine 1 negative because now we added the electron to the fluorine in the gaseous phase. Now, this, if we drop down, it's going to go all the way down here below our starting point. This is the lattice enthalpy right there because that's going to form potassium fluoride in the solid state. Okay? And so because the gaseous ions form in the, the ionic crystal, that by definition is lattice enthalpy. Okay, now we, got, uh, we need to finish one more thing here. We have to go, let's go ahead and just bring this line over here to stretch it out. Okay, we can go from our original point here down here as well. And that would be the um, enthalpy of formation. That's this, that's the enthalpy of formation. The formation of the potassium fluoride from its elements in the standard states is enthalpy of formation, which is a negative 363. Right there, so negative, let me do it in the color that we've been doing the numbers in. So negative 363 is the enthalpy of formation from solid potassium and fluorine in the gaseous state to the solid crystal. Okay, so we have constructed the born harbor cycle here. Now, the basic premise holds true. Arrows in one direction, so see these arrows are all going and they just continue to go. It just turns itself over and goes down here. And if we continue to cycle back around, we hit an arrow that's going in the opposite direction. Okay. 
And so these arrows in yellow are equal to the other pathway, which is just this single drop right there. And so it's the, uh, we're kind of out of room here, uh, but it's the uh, enthalpy of atomization of potassium plus first ionization energy plus enthalpy of atomization of fluorine plus um, electron affinity, I didn't write that here, plus the electron affinity plus the lattice enthalpy equals the delta H of formation. And so that's your mathematical equation set up. So if you do that and you add all that up, then you get, well, this is 563, sorry, not 363, that's 563. And if you, if you do all of that, then you'll get the lattice enthalpy equal to negative 801. I think is, yeah, negative 801 kilojoules per mole, okay? And so that is a born haber cycle. And so they're all going to look the same. Uh, you start with the, uh, the elements in their standard states and however many you need. So if you need half of the diatomic, do a half in front of it. Then you're going to take the metal and atomize it. Then you're going to take the atomized metal ion and ionize it. And you're going to take the uh, non-metal and you're going to atomize it and you're going to add that electron with electron affinity, and you're going to use the lattice enthalpy to go all the way down, and then the other pathway is the enthalpy of formation. Now, in this case, we solve for lattice enthalpy, but you could solve for anything. If I gave you lattice enthalpy and all the other things, I could maybe ask you to find the electron affinity or the first ionization energy or the atomization of fluorine. I can give you any of the numbers and ask to find the, the one that I leave out. Now, one thing to mention before we move on, if there happens to be a, a metal that's going to be a 2 plus, um, or sorry, a 2 negative. And so remember, the first electron affinity would go down, but if there was a second, so we're making like, say it was oxygen, so we're making an oxygen that needs to be 2 negative, this step here would make it a 1 negative. And we have to add another electron to make it 2 negative. Remember, the second electron affinity actually would go back up, so it would go back up and then it would go back down. Uh, so just keep that in mind. We're going to do some practice, so you'll see that in the practice problems. So that's a Born-Haber cycle.